You are listening to Booked, the bookstore education podcast brought to you by the American Booksellers Association. In this episode, we're featuring Building Diverse Children's Sections, a session that was presented at Children's Institute 2024 in New Orleans. Hi, everybody. We're going to start with um, one of the... (laughs) one of the last sessions that we have for today. And honestly, this is, we are at the last leg of this race, right? I hope you guys have been having a good time. My name is Preeti. I am, (laughs) and Greg is my cheerleader. (laughs) All right. Okay, so we'll just quickly go through the um, the housekeeping and the, you guys have seen this. I know, you've seen this way too many times. So we have all decks and slides and handouts. It's on our app. We have the program, website. I'm just reading these bold letters. Um, Please, please do the session evaluations. That's really helpful for us. Silence your cell phones and any other devices that we do not know of. And the guidelines, a couple of no's, no discussion of price or pricing policies, no discussion of boycotts, no discussion of dividing up the market on and so forth and now the introductions I do have so full disclosure I wasn't there at the Winter Institute so I do have uh, some helpful notes from my friends so I'm just going to read this we do have the basic introductions here but I'm just going to go by the script okay so This session was developed as a test in response to the booksellers at Winter Institute who spoke out about the lack of diversity in titles that were presented during rep picks in Cincinnati. We considered various approaches to addressing this challenge and came up with this plan. We asked each publisher who is a part of Children's Institute to send us three titles that were written by authors featuring characters that are black, BIPOC, LGBTQIA2S+, neurodiverse, and or disabled. Each publisher attending Children's Institute submitted titles, and we are pleased to share that today, books will be presented by all who could be with us today. The complete list of 140 titles is available in an Edelweiss collection. You'll see the QR code in the next slide. Um, This session is going to be a lightning round of presentations. Each presenter has one minute to do an elevator pitch, a tiny speech, an introduction to their book. Some of these books were presented during rep picks, but most of them were not. The books range from picture books to YA and include both front list and back list. And we are really looking forward to your feedback about this session. Is this something that we should consider in the upcoming Winter Institute or not? Would you like to see any changes in the format? So yes, the session evaluation will be crucial. Okay. All right. Did I do good? I did. (laughs) (laughs) So that's the QR code for the Edelweiss collection if we want to take a look at it. Again, the spotlights that I just mentioned. And actually, now we're just going to go right straight into the presentation. I'm not going to take up any more of our time. I am going to call upon Dr. Artika R. Tyner from Planting People, Growing Justice. Thank Thank you. For our book, Gumbo Joy, it's perfect timing, perfect place to be right here in Louisiana and celebrating that joy that I talked about at the round table. I'm happy to introduce a debut author, Robert Peter Dixon Jr., who is a native of Louisiana. And as he talked about his book idea, I couldn't help but to say this is exactly what we need, an opportunity to inspire family, friends, and community to come together, to find joy, not just in the kitchen making gumbo, but to enjoy it together in meaningful ways. So what this book means is an introduction for readers to think about where learning happens, that learning is all around us. So not only does young Rose learn about cooking, she learns some basic things of chemistry through food science. She learns also how to work in teams, all the things that we need to inspire our next generation of young readers who are leaders. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, hi, my name's Avery. I'm from Nosy Crow. I'm sharing I'm Going to Be a Princess. This is a story of a little girl named Maya who comes home from school, and she is adamant telling her mom she's going to be a princess. And mom says, there might be some other options, and gives um, examples like Misty Copeland. You could be a ballerina, Alexa Kennedy. You could be um, a heart surgeon, incredible black women from throughout history. As it turns out, Maya wants to be Princess Amina, who was a 15th century Nigerian warrior princess. Um, so mom says, yeah, you can, you can be her. Um, and in the end, um, Maya says, well, if I'm a princess, that makes you a queen. And um, Jade Orlando is local to the US, so we're excited to um, be doing events with her. Hi, my name is Kenechi. Um, publisher is Kanji Press for African Writing. This book, um, the author Ayo Oyeku is based in Nigeria, where he visits uh, America from time to time. He's won a ton of awards in the UK and in Africa for his uh, books. Um, the finish line um, is about uh, Mafoya, a young girl who uh, wants to be the best athlete in town, and um, she has a lot of competition, and her parents are, you know, typical African parents, lots of pressure, you have to be the best and the first and whatever. And so she decides to cheat. And as punishment from the gods, she gets thrown into some magical world where she's sort of trapped until she, she, um, she learns that you can win without having to uh, devolve into some kind of um, cutting corners and all of that. Um, the book is um, well on sale September 20. Um, it's our first uh, children's title as a new press. And um, I think you would love it whoever is buying. I don't know if this is the people buying. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, everybody. I'm Alonzo Fuller from Andrews McMill Publishing, and I want to share something that's unique, divine, and magical. Um, so the author of this book, April Showers, was often referred to as a unicorn, a rock star, but often that emoji is only available in white. So she created Afro Unicorn to give black and brown children a vision of themselves, to show them how unique, divine, and magical they are. And now we have those three words available in graphic novel format. So welcome to the land of Afronia, where color rules the world. So what happens when all that color is stripped away? Unique and divine do not want to find out. Um, and the hunt for the missing crown is on. They must retrieve it before Afronio goes dark forever. Um, this is a graphic novel for early readers, ages six through nine, features dyslexia-friendly fonts, and is vetted by a reading expert. So it's definitely something I suggest. Um, this is truly um, a vision of me, basically, when I was little, <laughs> so. <laughs> Hey, I'm David from uh, Pushkin Press and Steerforth Press, and we're doing uh, Kekla Magoon, The Flag Never Touched the Ground. Uh, this powerful story of an all-black regiment in the Civil War is the early breakout from the True Adventures series of inspiring middle-grade historical fiction featuring BIPOC authors, characters, and stories. Uh, bringing history to life, this wonderful series of paperbacks, like so, um, introduces diverse new heroes, enthralling stories, amazing discoveries, and courageous defiance. And I think it's really important to note that by focusing on BIPOC excellence as opposed to histories of oppression and centering these stories on specific historical characters, these books really give the stories um, a whole new life uh, and bringing uh, important parts of history to light. There are five books in the series, three on our fall list. Uh, with more scheduled over the next two years, including books focusing on young female heroes of Jamaica, China, and India, and they all feature fascinating um, end matter extras, such as maps and timelines and essays and illustrations that put the series into historical context. But Kekla's book is the best. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Fithian from Raycraft Books. Saturday School is the first book in Rakia Lowell's new chapter book series. Zay loves school. His friend Weekend does not. When Zay suggests they go to the new Lego Math and Writing Club, Weekend is super skeptical. School club on Saturday, no way. Zay helps get his friend to move out of the comfort zone of video games and try something new. 
This friendship series has a fun, kid-friendly voice at 44 pages. It won't intimidate reluctant readers. The cover art is attractive to both chapter book and older readers. Themes include communication between friends and helping others. It's available in hardcover and paperback from Raycraft Books. Hi everyone, I'm Valerie Pierce from Sourcebooks and I am so excited about this ravenous fate from Haley Dunning. She is a debut author. This is a black sapphic horror romance set in Harlem in the jazz age. So it has a little bit of everything for everyone in this. In this story, you're going to meet Layla. She is a reaper uh, or a vampire-like creature and she is sworn enemies with Elise who is the uh, heir apparent to a reaper hunting empire. Of course, there are gruesome murders happening in New York City and these two enemies have no choice but to come together and fight and figure out who is causing all these murders. And of course, these enemies become lovers because it's a sapphic, beautiful story. <laughs> so please make sure to pick up a copy of this. It is coming out in August. Haley lives in Northern California. She will go on tour, so come see me if you're interested. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Marola from Abrams Books. I'm honored to introduce The Maid and the Crocodile. This is a YA romantic standalone fantasy set in the world of Ray Bearer by New York Times bestselling author Jordan Ifueko. This is a West African inspired fantasy that explores class and disability and is full of lush world building and Nigerian inspired mythology that will stick with readers long after they finish it. When Jordan returned to the magical world of Ray Bearer, she was determined to write a story from a whole new perspective. She asked herself, why does fantasy revolve around kings and queens when the majority of society is focused on workers? Are workers less beautiful or less heroic or less magical than fairies and empresses? In Made in the Crocodile, the rights of essential workers are the beating heart of the story. It follows Small Shade, who is a maid and can alter people's fates by cleaning their homes. She accidentally binds herself to a handsome crocodile who is rumored to devour pretty girls. Together they spark a revolution that will change the lives of the people of the magical city in Oluan, from the maids all the way up to the anointed ones. This is perfect for fans of Beauty and the Beast and Howl's Moving Castle. You do not need previous knowledge of Ray Bear to enjoy. Thank you. Hi everyone, Maria Desmati from Cardinal Rule Press. I have my Zoom outfit on because I'm going to the airport right after I present. So, you know, just look at the top half, please. Um, today I'm presenting a backlist title, which is the Spanish edition of What the Bread Says. Author Vanessa Garcia is from Miami. She is a Cuban-American author, and this is a beautiful story about how a little girl learned to bake bread with her grandfather. While baking bread together, her grandfather told her incredible stories about his life, and through stories learned about roots and the power of family and love. All of our children's picture books are now translated into Spanish after six months of being on the market. So um, you can check out all of our titles, and they're all available in paperback because that is the price point that we're seeing the community of Spanish language learners are preferring. So we are listening to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Angus Ewan Killick from Red Comet Press, and I'm here to present Aloha Everything. In a starred review of Aloha Everything, Kirkus called the book a stunning tribute to Hawaiian culture and identity. Aloha Everything is a um, debut by two new creators, Kaylin Malia George, who's the author, and illustrator Mae Waite. Um, it's written as a long poem. Aloha Everything celebrates the landscape and nature, the people and their history, uh, the legends and folklore of the Hawaiian Islands. We see everything through the eyes of a Hawaiian girl, Anu, who's learning to appreciate all the rich aspects of her heritage um, through the dance storytelling tradition of hula. Um, it is no accident that the book carries a strong message of female empowerment. The text is lyrical and beautiful, and peppered with Hawaiian words, which are explained in a glossary and pronunciation guide at the back of the book. Aloha Everything came out in April and is already in its second printing. I hope you agree this is a standout and will enjoy selling it to your customers wherever you may live. Um, Kaylin Malia George lives in Los Angeles and May Waite lives in Honolulu. Mahalo. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi everyone, I'm Kari from Anik Press, and I'm happy to introduce a new chapter book series we have, uh, Sarah Ponicky Story Catcher. The first one we have here is uh, Ahasu's Forest Powwow. It begins with Sarah having moved from her home community into the city with her mother far away from her grandmother and her best friend who she, who she misses very much. Um, she tries to keep up with both of them, writing them long letters, but she still hasn't quite found her place in the city. Um, Sarah is a young Cree girl and she also feels disconnected from um, her culture having been removed from her, her community. So uh, in her new school, she has a number of new people who she thinks she's gonna be friends with, but they don't quite understand her and at some points end up bullying her. Um, after a particularly long day, she goes home and decides she wants to sleep it off. Um, but in her sleep, she ends up being transported to a magical forest where large talking animals are uh, conducting a powwow ceremony. Sarah has never seen a power ceremony before, um, but these animals show her all of the aspects of the ceremony, how to dance, um, and she starts to gain more self-confidence that she had lost uh, having moved. And when she wakes up, she returns to the real world and she ends up bringing that confidence that she learned at the powwow uh, into school and feels more empowered. So it's really a story that focuses on indigenous joy, um, reconnecting with your culture, uh, Sita McMillan, the author, is a uh, Cree author, and so is Asby Whitecalf, the uh, illustrator, and uh, it's really about promoting Cree culture. It, it uh, also promotes the Cree language, which is really important in uh, indigenous language preservation, and so young kids will, will learn um, some new Cree words while they read. I think we're missing one person, so we're gonna move on. Go ahead. Hi, everybody. I'm Darby from Union Square and Company, uh, presenting Lost and Found, that book on the bottom right. <laughs> being the new kid in school is scary enough, but imagine being the new kid in a new school in a new country. That's exactly the situation May finds herself in when she moves from China to Canada, and this mostly true story in the graphic novel style for young readers. Lost and Found is a hilarious, relatable, and moving story based on the author's own experience with immigrating from China and learning English. When May first moves to Canada, she's excited about it. But when she arrives and encounters this strange new language that she calls the English, the, excited, the excitement turns to nervousness and ultimately to fear. She reali relies on her stuffy Meow, who you can kind of see on that cover right there. He's very cute. To help her navigate these emotions, and together they decide that if she's going to make friends with the nice girl in class, then she's going to have to learn the English. She has a eureka moment when she realizes that she can use her art skills to track the words that she's as she's learning them. And throughout the book, the words she doesn't understand are in different col font color, so you have those visual cues to see her progress. May Yu's art style is inspired by manga, and it's also known worldwide through her YouTube channel that has 1.7 million subscribers. <laughs> this is her first graphic novel, and is out in hardcover and paperback now. We also have activity sheets and uh, educator's guides on Edelweiss, if you guys are curious. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikki, much with Scholastic, and I am so thrilled to present Malia Sadiq's Any Way You Look. This is one of my favorite middle grade reads of the whole year, so I'm excited to introduce it to you. It is a backlist title. It just released, just released in May, and the story is about a little girl named Ani who is in middle grade, um, and she's getting ready to live the best summer of her life. However, this is also the first summer where boys have started to notice her body and what she's wearing and making comments about it, and she wants to find a way to hide. Uh, the way that she thinks that she has to hide is to start wearing a hijab. And although that is a decision that she wants to make for herself, she thinks that the boys are pressuring her to make that. Luckily, she has a best friend, she has an amazing big sister, and she has a flair for fashion. And she decides to be empowered and teach boys how to respect girls' bodies. This is an amazing book of friendship, female empowerment, and just living your best life. And it is so, so, so funny. So it would be great for book clubs. I'm TJ Oler. I'm here from Zando, and I'm excited to share with you Throwback by Maureen Gu. This is our paperback repackage that we've done. Uh, and this is a YA contemporary with a speculative twist. Think Back to the Future and your favorite John Hughes movie with a Korean-American lead. Um, yeah. 
and Teen Sam doesn't get along with her mom, and after an intense fight, she's thrown way, way back to 1995, (laughs) where she's forced to work with her teenage version of her mom to win Homecoming Queen, and if she can't figure out how to work with her mom, she's going to be stuck in the 90s forever, as if. Along the way, Sam even falls for the right guy in the wrong era. So this is kind of the perfect read for Nicole Yoon fans and Morgan Matson fans. So if you're looking for a swoony read with powerful themes of family, this is perfect for your readers. This comes, the paperback comes out at the end of August and the hardcover is still available for purchase. Thank you. Hi there. Theming is really proud to lead off the section for trans and gender non-conforming representation with Costume for Charlie, which is the picture book in the middle. It's at my table as well. Sorry, I'm in your way. It's by C.K. Malone. It's an affirming and positive picture book that is also a fabulous Halloween read. And I don't think you'll find that much about bi-gender or non-conforming gender in, in the holiday section. So, Charlie is looking for and ends up creating an amazing, perfect Halloween costume that reflects who they are, both their feminine and masculine side. Ta-da! They become Little Red Dracula. (laughs) Sure, one kid thinks it's kind of a wacky costume. Two kids ask who Charlie is. But three do think it's an awesome costume. C.K. Malone is a bi-gender, award-winning educator and literary coach, and he coaches, they coach, through the Genders and Sexualities Alliance Network as well. Look for their new book, Poppy's All Soul Song, this coming this September. A couple of people not here. You know, go ahead and we'll, we'll... Go out right after. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison Tarnovsky from Holiday House Publishing, and I'm here to talk about uh, Ren Martin Ruins It All, which is also a backlist title. Um, this hilarious and compassionate romantic comedy from Amanda DeWitt, author of Isis Wild Heist, was an editor's choice pick for the PW 2022 U.S. Book Show and received a starred review from Booklist. Uh, it's on its second printing and is coming out in paperback this fall. So um, in this book we meet Ren Martin, uh, who's a student council president, and he is going to fix Rapture High. His first order of business, abolish the school's annual Valentine's Day dance, a drain on the school's resources and general social nightmare, especially when you're asexual. His greatest opponent, Leo Riaz, vice president and all around annoyingly perfect student. Leo has a solution to Ren's budget problem, a sponsorship from an anonymous not a dating app, sweeping the nation. Now, instead of a danceless senior year, Rand is in charge of the biggest dance Rapture High has ever seen. He's even secretly signed up for the app, for research, of course. But when Rand develops feelings for his anonymous match, things spiral out of control. Rand decided a long time ago that dating while asexual wasn't worth the hassle, but with the big night rapidly approaching, he isn't sure what will kill him first, the dance, his relationship drama, or the growing realization that Leo's perfect life might not be as perfect at all. Hi, I'm here to talk about, is this thing on? Uh, Pet by Akweke Ameze. Ameze, this is a backlist uh, title for us. Um, I'm sure you'll know Akweke Ameze's adult books. This was their first uh, paperback, or, oh my gosh, first young adult book, and it's in paperback. Um, Pet is about Jan, who lives in the city of Lucille, where there are no monsters. That has been conquered, and now we live in a society of peace. But what do you do when no one admits there are monsters, and Jam is the only one who recognizes them for what they really are? If you've read anything by Akweke, you know that this is a genre-defying, hard-to-explain novel that is um, superbly written. They're a National Book Award finalist, and this is one to check out. And now also we have the um, prequel called Bitter, which is available in paperback and hardcover, also from Kanaf. Hi, 
Hi everybody, I'm Jen from Orca, and I'm really excited to tell you about a board book edition of Pride Puppy. This is a book that came out in picture book format a couple of years ago, and I'm so excited it's in board book. It came out in April, so you can get it now, uh, by Robin Stevenson, and this is a really cool concept because it combines an alphabet primer with hide and seek, or seek and find, but also it's built around the story of a family that is getting ready to go to a Pride Parade. So you see them getting ready, then you see them going to the Pride Parade, and it covers all the beautiful things that they see along the way, and you can see there's a seek and find element where all the things that start with D at the Pride Parade. It's super inclusive, celebratory, lovely. The illustrations are gorgeous by Julie McLaughlin. What else can I tell you about this book? I love it. Um, if you come to Meet the Presses, floor number, two, floor number two, you can get a Pride Puppy sticker. They're very cute. Please come. Um, Robin Stevenson has written over 30 books for kids and young adults. Unfortunately, a lot of her books have been challenged, including the picture book um, version of this. And I like to mention that because she's a really a hero. What she does is amazing in terms of um, pushing back against these challenges and also supporting other authors who, who have, are dealing with, with that for the first time. So please check it out. Thank you so much. Happy Children's Institute, everyone, and happy Pride Month. I'm here to talk with you about Marley's Pride. Marley is a little non-binary kiddo with some big anxieties, but when their grandparent is being honored at the Pride Parade, they want to go and support them. This is a story about finding yourself, finding your community, and is complete with extensive endnotes on the history of pride, sensory sensitivities, and so much more. And I'll just end with a note from the author because who can say it better? Not me. <laughs> I wrote this book to highlight all the joy and beauty that comes with being black and queer. I also wanted to remind people that there is no right or wrong way to celebrate pride. I hope this book leads to more honest conversations about gender identity and trans rights. Marley's Pride is out and available now in hardcover and paperback, and you can come learn more about it and see more of Barefoot Books at our table at Meet the Presses on floor four. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Katie from Imagination Press, which is part of APA. I am sharing real siblings. I'm going to try to sh share my favorite interiors. I know it's not going to work well, so if you want to see more, let me know. I'm just pointing out that it follows Riley and her brother Wyatt. Um, they are both adopted by their two dads, who are of all different races. They go to the park. The scene at the park uh, someone in a wheelchair, all different races, so diverse in all aspects. They meet, I'm just letting stuff fall out, it's fine. <laughs> they meet um, a set of twins who say, well, you don't look alike, so you must not be real siblings, and this causes a full breakdown for them. And the rest of the book is them examining all the different ways that they know they're real siblings. So, one of them being, I know because sometimes there are things I only want to tell you. I know because you always pick me up when I can't reach and you help me learn to swim. Okay. My favorite page ends with, I know we are real siblings because our family wouldn't be whole if you weren't there. But most of all, I know we are real siblings because I feel it in my heart. This idea of Seamus Cursed in all his books is that love is what makes a family a family. Come check us out, floor four. Hi, I'm Alexis Lunsford. I am from Little Bee Books. We are a uh, progressive children's publisher based in New York City. Uh, though we are distributed by SNS, we are a teeny tiny team of 15 people just trying to. Um, publish books that help make the world a better place. Uh, our mission is built on five pillars total, um, LGBTQ plus acceptance, empowerment of women and gender nonconformists, diversity and representation of every kid, every family and every community, anti-bullying through kindness and understanding and awareness of complex topics like mental health, body image, the environment, activism and allyship. So today, I am showing you a backlist title of ours called Molly's Tuxedo. Molly is so excited for picture day, and she knows just what she wants to wear, her big brother's tuxedo. But mom bought her a frilly little dress to wear, so she has to make a choice. 
and she decides to do what her mother tells her to do and put on that dress. But on, her, on the way to school, she grabs that tuxedo and throws it into her backpack. And at drop-off, mom kisses her on the forehead and says, you do what's best for you. So she, she goes through her entire day in that frilly dress, itchy, and there's no pockets. And we all understand what that means. Um, and so finally, she caves and says, I got, I got to be me. And she runs to the bathroom and puts on her tuxedo and takes the cutest uh, 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 school portrait for the family wall. Um, so this is a celebration of being true to yourself, being who you are, and accepting your family members as they are. Um, Vicki Johnson lives in the Washington, D.C. area and is a constant promoter for us. Um, our, even our illustrator is in Ottawa, Canada, and loves to promote. This is a 2024 NCTE Charlotte, Charlotte Huck Award um, for Outstanding Fiction for Children and um, an ALA Rainbow List selection for 2024. Thank you. I'm Jenny Sheridan from HarperCollins, and I'm presenting How It All Ends by Emma Hunsinger on sale August 9th. It is a uh, graphic novel, four-color graphic novel, simultaneous hardcover paperback. It's about T uh, Tara, who is informed at the beginning of the book that she's going to be skipping eighth grade and going right to high school. And high school, of course, is, is a nerve-wracking experience, even in the best of times. So she starts her first day. Her sister, her older sister is no help. This is a girl, Tara, who she enjoys being a kid. She's not one of those kids that wants to grow up too fast. She loves playing with her baby brother. It's just, I want to say it's just so awesome and related for all ages so she starts school and she's just trying to fit in she's trying to make her way her sister's older friends you know diss this singer that she secretly likes then she goes to English class and she meets Libby and and Libby is just you know they are seeing eye to eye she starts to over the coming days really starts to feel very strongly about Libby and she says to Libby thinking it's the right thing oh this singer sucks and Libby says that's my favorite singer and she has to try to backtrack that it just is so everything about this book was so relatable both for you know the the you know intended middle grade audience but on up certainly to age 62 the idea that anxiety and and i i know i might be going on too long but she it thinks when she's talking it's in one color and when she's having her you know, spin out anxiety, fantasies, it's in another color, and I, it's just the most relatable book. It is so charming. I'm so excited for you guys to sell it. Again, all ages. It's just terrific. I'm really excited about it. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rachel Zegsworth from Learner Publishing Group, and I'm here to talk to you about the gender binary is a big lie. Um, Author Lee Wind travels through history to show that gender has always fallen inside and outside of the gender binary and has always been uh, massively diverse. He specifically is looking at all the way to 4,500 year old third gender burial sites in the Czech Republic and the Bugis people of Indonesia who recognize three physical sexes and five genders. So just to show that none of this is uh, a modern um, invention and mostly the gender binary is upheld by the people who benefit most from it. Um, it includes 50 pages of source notes. He's really focused on primary sources and showing um, evidence from history for kids, I would say middle school and up, um, to help them understand their place in the world has always been here. Hello, I'm Kara Nisi from Heshet Books, and I have uh, two titles back-to-back -back on this slide for LGBTQIA plus representation, so um, bear with me. Uh, Mismatched is a fantastic YA graphic novel, which is a queer, gender-bent retelling of Jane Austen's Emma and, of course, Clueless. We have all the story of Evan Horowitz, a teen social media star who um, specializes in beauty, um, who learns that he can't control everything, especially when it comes to the romances of his closest friends and cohort of the Straight and Gay Alliance club he leads. Set in a modern day uh, high school in Queens, New York, this is a fresh take on a uh, classic story which features romance, heartache, and pitch perfect yearning, all the ingredients of a first crush. This book is, has fun, fantastic, vibrant artwork and an anime-like style, perfect for friends of another favorite of mine, Princess and the Grilled Cheese Sandwich. 
Um, and then after that, I've got my second title, um, which I'll present, which is I'll Take Everything You Have, a historical noir novel about the life-changing summer of a 16-year-old boy named uh, Joe Garb as he discovers the queer community in 1930s Chicago and gets caught up in the city's crooked underbelly. Joe arrives in Chicago that summer with one goal, to earn enough money uh, to save the family farm. But when he gets into a suck, gets sucked into a get-rich-quick scheme by his cousin, uh, Joe um, finds himself uh, pulled into the underworld of the city. While running his con, he finds himself split between um, Eddie, the handsome flirt, and Raymond, a carefree rich kid, who sh uh, shows Joe the queer life around uh, every corner of this big city. Um, but soon, uh, danger is closing in, and before he gets out, he can, first has to decide who he wants to be. This is a really groundbreaking queer story, showcasing a story of a, a queer co kid coming out during a very closeted time, and adds really to the lexicon of queer history, which is still quite underexplored, especially for this age range. Um, this was a Kirkus Best Book of the Year and a perfect book to add to your sections and displays. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Emily Hutton from Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing, and I'm going to talk about Kaz Winness's Bitsy Bat School Star from 2023. Bitsy Bat has big star dreams for her first day of school, but she's the only toe hanger in class, making the other kids laugh. And sitting upright makes her dizzy. They scoff when she uses her feet to paint, are grossed out by her favorite snack of bugs, and tell her she's doing it wrong when she hangs upside down on the monkey bars at recess. After a five-star meltdown, Betsy's, uh, Bitsy's big star dreams are shot until her family helps her come up with a big star idea. The next day, proudly donning her star sunglasses to block the two bright lights, and headphones to block the two loud noises, Bitsy hands out stars for everyone to write what makes them special and share with the class. Soon Bitsy is a terrific toe hanger. Painting with her feet means she looks at things in a new way, and her favorite insect dish is yummy, and when she flies at recess, the other kids fly too with her on the swing set. Geisel Honoré, Author illustrator Kaz Witness is autistic, just like Bitsy, so the story is near and dear to her heart. Um, using identity first messaging, Kaz and Bitsy are autistic, not they have autism. Uh, Kaz promotes acceptance, inclusion, and empathy around neurodivergence in the classroom. And while she notes Bitsy's experience of um, Bitsy's autistic experience is different from others as the autistic spectrum is wide and varied. Her story shows us that all kids are special, neurodivergent or not, and that difference should be celebrated. Kaz includes kid-friendly back matter, let me just show you here, uh, with a glossary explaining important terms from the story like neurodivergent, shutdown, stimming, um, and an author's note telling kids about her own experience so they can embrace and be power, uh, proud of their own. Um, Kaz is from Denver, Colorado. Bitsy Bat School star was an Indie Next pick and an MBI, MPIBA Reading the West uh, finalist. And Bitsy Bat Team Star, Pubs in Spring 2025. Hi everybody, I'm Travis Hale with Independent Publishers Group, and I'm here to present Wiggles, Stomps, and Squeezes, Calming My Jitters at School. Uh, this was written by Lindsay Rowe Parker and illustrated by Jessica Burgess, uh, published by BQB Books. This is a hardcover picture book for ages five through seven and published in March of this year. Uh, and this is the second book in the Wiggle, Stomps, and Squeezes series, a series that focuses on children with sensory differences. This one is specific to a school setting. Uh, the story follows a child as they navigate new environments at school with the help of various activities that allow them to regulate their sensory needs. As you read along, you gain helpful insight into how sensory sensitive children can find solace in wiggles, stomps, and squeezes, uh, and how supportive adults can play an active role in supporting and fostering their emotional well-being. Uh, the book, uh, 
uh, was written by, like I said, Lindsay Rowe Parker, who is a neurodivergent author. She received an, a, a diagnosis of ADHD later in life and is illustrated by an autistic illustrator, Jessica Burgess, who is based in the UK. Uh, the paperback edition will be available in the fall this September. And also available is the Calming My Jitters activity book. And this is distributed, again, by Independent Publishers Group, IPG. Please come visit us on the fourth floor at the Meet the Presses tables if you haven't done so already. Thanks so much. Hi, everybody. I'm Nicole from Fabled Films Press. And today I'm really excited to share with you Hannah Edwards' Secrets of Riverway. It's a neurodiverse reimagining of Hamlet for middle graders by debut author Ashley Hartz. It's a coming-of-age story and a mystery a la Nancy Drew with the main character that conjures up Ava from Turtles All the Way Down. Okay, so Hannah Edwards. She has a lot on her mind. Her father, the Canola King, is missing, and no one in their sleepy rural town really seems to care. So with the help of her best friend, Sam Castillo, and Tim the Hall Monitor, Hannah embarks on a journey to solve the mystery of her father's disappearance. Along the way, she uncovers secrets that she records in her journal, she confronts challenges in school due to her ADHD, talks to a ghost, and learns the true meaning of determination and friendship. The world that Shakespearean author, scholar, Ashley Hards has created is deeply rooted in herself. She was declared gifted at eight and diagnosed with ADHD at 22, 22 years old while studying at McGill University. Her experience of what she went through as a child gives Hannah's journey a unique authenticity. With over 9.8% of kids in the US have ADHD with girls both underdiagnosed, as we just heard, and underportrayed in the media. We hope to give kids like Ashley a chance to feel seen when they read Hannah Edwards' Secrets of Riverway. The book was designed with accessibility in mind, um, and we also have a neurodiverse guide and educational materials available to support it. We have galleys at our table, um, and also in the room, in the, uh, at our Meet the Presses table and also in the gallery room or send an email to Fabled Films Press. It's also available for instant download on Edelweiss. We can't wait for you to read it. This time I'm here to talk to you about the color of sound. 12-year-old um, Rosie has synesthesia, as does the author. Um, in the book, it enables Rosie to see music as color. Um, and she's also a violin prodigy, but that's really more her mom's dream than hers. So the summer she's 12, she refuses to play. Her mom is fed up and packs her off to spend the summer at her grandparents' house, where she meets a girl about her age, um, you know, sort of on the back part of the property. It's like a big farm. And through a couple of things, she realizes that the girl that she's talking with is actually her own mom at age 12. So through this mysterious glitch in time, she learns um, to understand herself, her mother, um, the traumatic history of her grandparents' Holocaust experience, and ultimately um, is able to resolve things with her whole family. It's a beautiful intergenerational story um, with a little bit of a touch of magic. <laughs> so um, I'm back. Sorry, you can't get rid of me that easy. But um, I'm talking about the Infinity Rainbow Club, and it is Connor and the Taekwondo Tournament. So uh, mostly at Beaming Books, we do picture books, but we're really proud to have this chapter book series. This is the third in the series, and it's by a neurodivergent educator who has three neurodivergent children, each with a different condition. So she really knows her business. She's a teacher of writing, and Connor has a little problem in that he has ADHD, and it's getting in the way of crushing his rival in the Taekwondo tournament. So his friends meet with him. They have an infinity rainbow club after school for all the neurodivergent kids. And his friends help him understand what he needs to do to concentrate more, but also make a new friend with the rival. Um, we're really excited. The, the first book was Nick and the Brick Builder Challenge, where Nick has autism or is autistic. I know there's two different ways to think about that. And he has been given of all horrors a school assignment where he has to work with somebody else when he could do it himself. And the second book in the series is um, uh, Violet, who has o OCD. And she's setting up an, an exhibit in a museum. So all of these settings are really exotic and fun for kids. They're great characters, great plots. And they're in paperback at $8.99, and they're in hardcover as well for the library market. One last slide, guys. We're almost there. 
All right, I'm back with one of my favorite picture books of all time. This is The Girl Who Figured It Out. It is an autobiographical picture book from Minda Dentler. She is the first female wheelchair uh, athlete to complete the Ironman World Championship. Uh, this woman is absolutely amazing. I've met her. She is such a delight. Uh, she was born in India, and before she turned one years old, she contracted polio and was told she would never walk again. Shortly after that, she was adopted by an American family who brought her over to the U.S., and her parents always told her, Minda, you can do it. You just have to figure it out. And they supported her no matter who told her that she couldn't do something or who underestimated her. And she goes on, one of my favorite moments is she goes on to do the Ironman World Championship, and the first time she does it, she doesn't make it and it's really hard for her. But her parents tell her the same thing, Minda, if you want this, you just have to figure it out. So she dug in deeper, she ate healthy, she worked hard, and she finally overcame that and became that world champion. This is such a wonderful, inspirational story for all children, and I hope all of you get to take a look at this one. Hi there, I'm Madeline from BTPS, and I'd like to share an in-house favorite of ours, which is Mighty Mara. Um, in this book, readers are introduced to the very homogeneous town of Same Town, which is cleverly depicted with muted colors. And the only bright or diverging spot is young Mara, who aspires to be a dancer, much to her community's dissuading and sometimes even bullying. It isn't until the end of the book, in a very emotive and striking scene at the school talent show, that the reader learns why. Um, it's because Mara is a wheelchair user, and uh, the rest of the town is doing a magic act for their uh, talent show act, and they think that Mara should do it too. It's not because they don't understand how she can dance, um, or it's not because they don't think she can do it, but they don't understand how she can do it. Um, and while in the end everyone is not completely changed for the better, they do better champion Mara, who is actually a really good dancer, even if it's not something they understand. So this story is super realistic and not pedantic at all. Um, and it's truly representative of what differently abled people are really capable of. It's also written from a place of authenticity as the author, Karina Ho, is a wheelchair user herself as well as a professional performer, just like Mara. We love this book so much and we hope you will too. Um, and it is getting a sequel in the spring. Hello, I'm Amanda Schaffner from Free Spirit Publishing. I'm here to talk about Addie's Chair to Everywhere by Debbie Novotny. So Addie uses a wheelchair, but the story is not about her disability. Rather, the story is about imagination, friendship, and inclusive play. Together, Addie and her new friends create worlds where they race chariots, travel to space, and explore the ocean. The author is a former teacher who, during recovery from cancer, taught kindergarten from a wheelchair, and this experience inspired her to write this book and further commit herself to creating a welcoming and adaptive classroom. The back matter includes the author's tips on building an inclusive community, and the DRC is on Edelweiss. Thank you. Hi again, Allison from Holiday House. This time I'm talking about The Loudest Silence by Sydney Langford. Um, so Casey once dreamed of becoming a singer. Then the universe threw her a life-altering curveball, sudden permanent and profound hearing loss, just before her family's move from Portland to Miami. Now she's learning to navigate the world as a deaf, hard of hearing person while trying to conceal her hearing loss from her new schoolmates. Hayden is also keeping secrets. Three generations of his family have risen to stardom on the soccer field, and Hayden knows his family expects him to follow in their footsteps. But he wants to quit soccer and pursue a career on Broadway. If only his generalized anxiety disorder didn't send him into a debilitating spiral over the thought of telling the truth. When their, love, uh, when their paths cross at school, they bond over their love of music and mutual feeling that they don't belong. And then the secrets come spilling out. Their friendship is the beating heart of this dual perspective story featuring thoughtful disability representation, nuanced queer identities, and a lovable, quirky supporting cast. Kirk has just called it a, ho a wholesome ode to devoted friendship. Sydney, Sydney Langford is a queer, deaf, hard of hearing, and physically disabled author living in Portland, and this is their debut novel. 
And since I'm last, I'm just going to go a little longer for a second. And in the, author's, in the author's note, I thought it was important to mention that they said that they wrote this book for the lost, anxious 14-year-old version of their self, for the disabled kids struggling to find representation, and to help introduce able-bodied readers to disabled perspectives that they may not have considered before. So we hope you can solve this. All right, that's all, folks. <laughs> Please rate this session. We will look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Book to the Bookstore Education Podcast brought to you by the American Booksellers Association. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app. Additional educational resources can always be found on the ABA website at www.bookweb.org. Happy reading.